In this tutorial, we're going to create headphones using SolidWorks X-Shape, a cloud-based subdivision tool for freeform 3D modeling. The following topics will be included in this workflow. You can find what you need to get started and design along with us using the link in the description below. Opening the headphone start file, we first want to make sure we're designing in the correct view mode and with the correct units. Using the shortcut key S, we can access the command search. Let's search view modes to display the different options. These are the settings we'll be using for this tutorial. To ensure the units are correct, check that the drop down on the right side of the screen is set to millimeters. In the design manager to the left, we can see the headphone start file includes five ordered geometrical sets or OGSs. The first contains the ear cups, the second contains the buttons, and the third contains the ear cushions. The fourth and fifth will contain the headband and headband cushion that we're going to design. We'll start off by creating the second ear cup, so let's double click to make sure that OGS is activated and bold in the design manager. For this tutorial, we'll use a cleaner design window by collapsing the design manager and action bar. Let's use command search to open the reflect subdivision tool in order to mirror the right ear cup. Select the ZX plane as the reflect plane and check create new subdivision before applying the command. To begin connecting the new ear cup to the buttons, let's pan to the bottom of the subdivision and select one of the faces. Select subdivide faces from the context toolbar. Note the green line signifies symmetry is turned on, so the faces on either side of the line will be subdivided. Using the control key, select both newly created faces and click crease edges from the context toolbar. Then hit extrude to add more material. To align these faces with the buttons, select one of them, then turn on select through subdivision geometry from the top toolbar to control select the button plane. Choose Align to Geometry to bring these faces together. To perfect the shape of this connection, click the button plane again and view it head on by selecting Normal 2 or using the shortcut key N. Let's choose one of the extruded faces to access the robot manipulator. We can use the robot to translate rotate, and scale any subdivision entity. Right now, the robot is oriented according to our selection, but we can reorient it by right-clicking the center. Let's select Screen to align the robot normal to our view. Clicking and dragging the small circle at the end of the arrows on the robot will allow us to scale in that direction. Note this automatically occurs on both sides since symmetry is still turned on. Let's scale slightly in the Y and X directions to fit the extrusion to the buttons. To fit the shape even better, let's use the keyboard shortcut C to access the cage views. Pressing the button once accesses the cage and surface view. Pressing it again will access only the cage view. For now, let's use the cage view. To align the vertices on either side of the buttons, Select the top left corner vertex, then shift select the bottom left corner vertex to select any vertices between them. From the context toolbar, select align vertices to each other. Note that the first two selected vertices define the alignment for the entire selection. Let's repeat this process on the right side of the buttons, then switch back to the surface view with the keyboard shortcut C. The ear cups are now complete. Let's exit the subdivision environment from the top toolbar. Next, we'll create the headband with a net surface. Let's move our mouse to the left side of the screen to show the design manager, then pin it with the icon in the top right. Let's show the headband OGS using the hide show column, then activate it with a double click. Using command search, Let's find and open the net surface primitive command. 
In the dialog box, we can designate the headband profile and guide sketches from the design manager. To simplify the shape, let's decrease the number of profile cuts to 5, the number of guide cuts to 11, then hit enter. Once the command is applied, we can hide the profile and guide sketches directly from the graphics area and collapse the design manager. Now we'll sharpen the outer edges of the headband. Double click one of the central faces towards the top or bottom edge to select the face loop going in the vertical direction. Next, choose the crease edges command from the context toolbar. To quickly create the other half of the headband, select the ZX plane, choose symmetry from the context toolbar, and apply the command. Next, we'll sculpt the profile of the headband. Using the shortcut key N, we can snap to the closest top, bottom, or in this case, side view. Let's add one more edge loop that goes around the top of the headband by selecting one of the horizontal edges and clicking Insert Loops from the context toolbar. To resize the headband, let's launch the Flex command from Command Search, then box select the entire headband shape. Using the robot, scale the model inwards so the width of the top of the headband is approximately halved, then apply the command. Now we can rotate our view with the Shift and arrow key shortcut to focus on sculpting the front. Our goal is to thicken only the top of the headband, so let's open Working Zone mode from the command search to make sure we're only editing a certain area. We want to select the seven clusters of vertices on the inside of the top of the headband for our working zone. An easy way to do this is with the lasso tool. We can access this tool by beginning to box select, then going back over the same spot we started. Now we can freely trace out our selection. Since symmetry is turned on, we only need to select the left four clusters of vertices before applying the command. We'll apply a gradual thicken to these vertices using soft selection mode also from the command search. This mode allows us to extend the influence of the robot manipulator. In the dialog box, change the dropdown to extend the influence by face count and make sure the number of faces is set to 3. Let's box select the middle group of vertices and drag down by 5 millimeters. We can now exit soft selection by closing the dialog box, then close the working zone by clicking the coin dropdown in the top right. Be sure to leave the symmetry coin active. Panning around to the bottom, we can see the headband geometry is not closed. We can make this shape watertight by selecting one of the open edges and choosing fill edges from the context toolbar. Let's round the inner edges of the shape by selecting one, then using tangent propagation to select the rest. Uncrease these edges from the context toolbar. We can round the shape even more by selecting the bottom middle edge, reorienting the robot to selection, and dragging down 10 millimeters. Now we're ready to connect the headband to the ear cups. To do this, let's pan to the inside of the lower part of the headband and control select the four faces opposite the ear cup connection. Delete these faces with either the command or the keyboard shortcut. Next, control select one edge from each of the open subdivisions. The Merge Surfaces feature will appear in the context toolbar after releasing the control key. Select the command and change the dropdown to Merge by joining directly before applying. The result will be a new subdivision. Let's repeat this process on the other side of the headphones. And exit the subdivision environment. Finally, we'll add a headband cushion at the top of our headphones. To begin, let's activate the headband cushion OGS from the design manager and show the profile sketch through the hide show column. Launch Extrude Primitive from the command search 
and zoom in to select the sketch as the profile. Let's change the distance to 50 millimeters and increase the number of profile segments to 14. Make sure the number of Z segments remains at 3. After applying the command, let's hide the profile sketch from the Hide Show column in the Design Manager. Another way to apply symmetry is through shortcut rings. To access shortcut rings, click the right mouse button, move slightly in any direction, and hold. In the subdivision environment, the shortcut ring will only show subdivision commands. Let's swipe through the symmetry command to activate it, select the ZX plane from the graphics area, and apply the command. To sculpt the headband cushion to shape, let's change to a front view with the orientation triad, and once again open soft selection from the command search. This time, let's set the mode to by radial distance and set the radius to 100 millimeters. Let's box select the end cluster vertices and use the robot to angle them inward 25 degrees. Exit the command when complete. To close the geometry, we can use the shortcut ring again to quickly access the fill edges command. Closing one open end will automatically close both since symmetry is turned on. The sculpting process is now complete and we can exit the subdivision environment. As a final touch, let's change the color. Click any face on the headband or ear cup to access the color wheel from the context toolbar. We have the option to color specific faces, but let's change the drop down to color the entire set. Click the current color in the bottom right of the dialog box to access the various ways you can create your own shade. To better view our final design, let's use the V keyboard shortcut to show the view menu and click the top option to hide any planes. We can press V again to remove the menu. Our headphone model is now complete. Feel free to continue modeling and make this design your own. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, check out the SOLIDWORKS YouTube channel.